Right, another actual Eagle Moss unboxing. Um, I think this one I got from uh, Doncaster Toy Fair, actually. It was quite funny because the guy was trying to sell me all of his remaining Star Trek stuff because he just wanted to get rid of them. And I found that puzzling because with Eagle Moss having gone out of business, you would have thought that people would you know, pay a little bit more for them. And indeed, I'm sure a lot of people have on eBay, but um, this guy seems to be the opposite opinion that they were just taking up space in his store or whatever and he wanted shot. But... Um, I, I limited myself to the ones I didn't already have, um, and he asked me what on earth this was, and I happily said to him, oh, it's the Superman cell ship, and there was, I could see there was absolutely zero enlightenment on his face, so I thought, yeah, well, why would you, because if you're not, uh, if you're not into all your, um, your Star Trek iterations, you would wonder what the hell this strange looking, is it an octahedron? I'm not sure, something like that. Um, but it is a mad looking little ship. And yet again, it's one of those ships in Star Trek I actually quite like the concept of, simply because it doesn't look like many other ships in Star Trek, because it doesn't need to, it's a spaceship. If it wants to look like a boulder, it can look like a boulder. And, um, you know, it's it's almost got a touch of the sort of the, a Borg sphere about it. I think cause it's kind of, because it's geometric, do you know what I mean? Um, so this is a tiny little Suliban ship from Star Trek Enterprise, Crew 1 to 2, launch 22nd century, 3.25 metres weapon, particle cannon. And that may not sound very impressive, but they acted in swarms. Um, so the Enterprise was often overwhelmed by them because there'd be about a dozen of them. And the Enterprise could take them down, um, but they were used in sort of boarding actions quite a lot, as I recall. So they're, they're basically designed to work as part of a, a swarm, so they're not really sort of reliant on just their own firepower to do anything, because they wouldn't work like that. They might work like that in a stealth fashion. Um, and they work, they did have um, a sort of a basic cloak on them as well. Um, they did have bigger versions as well. They, wasn't, they weren't just limited to these teeny tiny ones, but you can see here, there's a whole sort of mass of them here. Um, and that's just how they operated. So there's quite a clever little design. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it was warp. Did it say that they're warp? I'm trying to think if it was warp capable, does it say? Yes, at least warp five. So so they basically they could catch the Enterprise because the Enterprise wasn't very high warp in those days. So um, so for a, a ship that small to have warp is, is not unheard of in Star Trek because Obviously, a lot of the Federation shuttles weren't much bigger than this, and they had warp. So it's fair enough. But what you don't see here, because it's so symmetrical, there's no there's no indication of warp nacelles as such, which again is interesting because that breaches one of the the early design tenets of um, of Star Trek in that they have that there was there was supposed to be sort of opposing nacelles on either side of the ship. In, 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 and indeed in, in line of sight with one another, but that was an old tenet, and obviously that's been you know that's been done away with for people like Borg and indeed the Suliban, who whose ships can look however they damn well please. <laughs> so um, I see quite a few sort of design iterations that they went through with it, but it's quite clever because obviously it means it can it has lots of sort of latch on points they can just sort of interconnect with with each other quite happily to form these these big mast structures and. Um, those are the slightly the bigger versions there. So it's, it's cool. Just amazing the sheer amount of creativity that goes into the, into the design of these things is it's pretty impressive. Oh, that, that's the chap who was the Suliban, of course. Um, he was the guy who played. They were shapeshifters as well, so they were, um, that's that's an interesting point actually, given what's happening in Picard at the moment. Everyone's assuming that they're, they're changing. Well, it has been confirmed that, that changing is doing it rather than anyone else. But um, yeah, I've, I've, I've forgotten that the, the Suliban were quite good at their their shape shifting as well. So oh dear, that's very plastic. I'm pretty sure that is one of my classic. I don't like it because it's really plasticky ones. The detailing is fine. Um, but I think that is almost entirely a plastic effort. There's still a little bit. Of, there's still a bit of weight to it. Um, in fairness, it's not. It's not sort of completely without um, sort of strength to it. But it's um, 
yeah, it's definitely a little bit a bit random that one as, as, as sort of designs go, I think. Another one of these boxes where the stand is kind of on the side rather than underneath it. I suppose the the much smaller models, they um they opted for a different a different box design. Can't say I'm a huge fan of it, but this is another one of these models that's just gonna you, it just sort of plonks down on top of its little um stand like that. So it's not really sort of you can see it's, it's designed for it. Um so I mean it is it is sort of structured in in that sense. But um it's not quite as nice as when they just sort of lock into it, but of course, given its shape, you can't really do that. So that was a, a Sudaban um, cell ship. That's about what, what I've got on that one, so I will move on to the next. Cheers for now.